Well, hey guys, I have my Sephora purchases here and would love to get ready with you using them. Just so you know what we have, let me show you. I've got some Sephora masks to talk about, the LYS setting spray, a couple things from CL, the Tint and Protect Foundation SPF 50, the CL Face Powder, setting powder, also with SPF 50. No, this one's SPF 30. Oh, I already got the bronzer. I must have gotten that previously. I got a Nude Sticks blush. This is the matte all over face blush, blush color. A Merit Beauty eyeshadow, solo shadow. A Sephora bronzer. These were just released, so I'm curious about that. So let's go ahead and jump in. If you're new here, welcome. If you're back, I really appreciate you. I have been gone for a while, but I am back. Thank you for your patience. I'm 50 years old, aging naturally. I use only clean products. So everything here is clean at Sephora, and I'll even tell you a little bit about the Sephora collection and why I'm comfortable using it. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go in order with what I have on my face. The order, I think you know what I mean. <laughs> I already have on the Maya Chia Vitamin C Serum, which has a lot of hyaluronic acid in it, so it really absorbs moisture from the environment. And so since I just got this mask, this is the quenching and plumping effect face mask from the Sephora collection. This is watermelon extract hydrating hyaluronic acid, 95% ingredients from natural or origins, and the mask is acacia based fiber. I wish I had looked into whether or not I could compost, compost the mask. I'm not sure if I can, maybe I'll do some research on that. But I, I have already used this, including putting the rest of the serum in here on my face. It really did smell lightly of watermelon. It was a beautiful scent. It was plumping, comfortable, easy to use. I'll insert a photo of me from this morning. My face still feels bouncy and hydrated. I'm quite impressed with this. And I'll share the other masks I got. I got the Skin Perfecting and Radiance Blueberry Extract Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid uh, Mask, Nourishing and Soothing Coconut Extract. And it looks like this one also has the Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Mask. And lastly, I got the moisturize, Moisturizing and Glowing Lychee Extract and Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Mask. So I'll put on the screen what the Sephora collection says. Uh, I found this under ingredient call out. It says all Sephora collection products comply with the most rigorous international laws on product safety, going beyond satisfying European and US cosmetics regulations. They also satisfy the strictest internal requirements of development, quality, traceability, and safety, and lead by example with a restricted substance list that excludes more than 1,400 substances. So I typically feel comfortable if things are sold in the European Union, they have different regulations than we do, they ban a lot of ingredients that we allow here in the United States. So. The Sephora collection is fine with me, and I'm excited. I've heard great things about their product, and that mask really kind of blew my mind. I'm always looking for a hydrating mask, and I always find that the ones I use don't leave me feeling really hydrated and bouncy and plump, and this did. This, again, the one I used was the quenching and plumping effect mask. I also already have on my lips something that you cannot get at Sephora. It's the Ritual de Fee Thorn Bite Peptide Plump Creme Lip Oil. It's just like a drink of water for your lips. I really love it. This is the clear shade. I'm sure it has a fun name that I can't read. Rose Dew. I'm gonna clip my hair back. This is a hodgepodge order. I said I'm gonna start with things in my face. Well, I guess I did do the mask. I did put the mask on my face, and that's how I got into the Sephora mask. But after the mask, I actually had to wait a while because it was so hydrated <laughs> that I felt like I didn't want to put anything else on my skin. But then I did go in with the Bloom FX Tulip Dew Sunscreen Serum SPF 50. I showed you in another video how it was broken, how I got in touch with Bloom FX and asked them to replace it because the tip was just broken off and I could hear something rattling in here. Joke's on me, everybody. You do need to shake it. It does have a little something in there to rattle. And then you take the top off 
and it's a pump. I'm not, I didn't have footage of me putting it on. I will show you a little bit of it. I love this, it leaves this dewy finish. Very dewy, glowy, shiny. So if you don't like that, you won't like this. However, I love it. I've been reaching for it every day that I've been in town. It, it's very liquidy, like water. And it does have a tint, but at the same time, I don't feel like it totally masks the whiteness. I haven't rubbed it all in yet, but you can see due to the shine and the mineral SPF, non-nano zinc oxide, of course, I feel like it does not a white cast. I don't know if you see the difference between my face and neck, although I thought I put it down here. Maybe it's just because it makes my face so shiny. What I'm trying to say is I don't know how this will work on darker skin tones, but you see the lovely dewy finish and it leaves your skin feeling really hydrated. I think since my face is still not tacky, but just so hydrated, it feels primed, I guess. So maybe it's not a bad time. I was gonna say, let's go in with eyes first. We'll just go in with foundation. I have the CL Tinted Serum Broad Spectrum SPF Sunscreen. It's SPF 50. It offers a light medium coverage with a natural finish. Wow, it says shake well, blend six to 10 drops on face and neck using brush, fingers, or sponge. I have the shade 05 Medium. And this is by the founder of Rowan. If you remember Rowan Beauty, I think. They were amazing lip gloss and those fantastic grungy eye looking eyeshadows. But then she sold the company years ago and whoever bought it just didn't keep the integrity of her formulas and it kind of went downhill. She started this line, CL, which is all sun protection based. <laughs> Everything has SPF in it. She does have a blush, which I didn't purchase. I do have her bronzer here as well. So let's go ahead in with this. This is what it looks like. Different packaging, I like it. The colors are different. I definitely can tell this apart from any other foundation. It's not just the clear jar. It is glass, but it's not refillable. I went through the same issue with this one. I unscrewed it because the cap will let you unscrew the top, but it's actually a squeeze tube. <laughs> so I took this top off and I couldn't figure out how to squeeze out any drops because when you have the top on, you, you don't see anything to squeeze. So do take the top off, do shake it, and then there is this nice squeezy tube. I'm just gonna put a drop here and a drop here. I am gonna put it on my neck as well. One, for the extra sun protection, and two, I think this shade is a little dark for me right now. And the way I put it on last time was I used my foundation brush from BK Beauty. It's the 101. I think this is the travel size, but it's the same. Just a tightly packed, dense brush. So as you saw, this is a liquidy formula. It spreads out really easily, thick enough that those few drops, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, including my neck, which they said between six and 10 drops for your face, it does have a little bit of coverage. It evened things out. You see the tint of the shade, which is why I brought it down my neck. Now I'm just patting it in. I'm bringing it up towards my ears to hopefully get the color on there too. Um, I didn't get any streaking on my face from the brush or any patchiness. It just looks like skin. I'm not getting polka dot skin, you know, from the pores. I'm gonna shake it and put on, well, I'll just put on the same amount again so we can see what kind of coverage. This is what I would be comfortable wearing on a day to day. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand. One, two, three, four, five. I think this will be a good co uh, color for me, shade for me in summer. I wanna use my fingers this time because a lot of times I prefer to use my fingers. I don't know why I used a brush with this the first time, I just did, it must have been close at hand. And you saw it went on beautifully. This has a nice texture to it. It does have some body, it's not too thin and liquidy like water. It spreads out nicely, so there's some emollients to it. I don't feel that I'm tugging at all. 
I keep rubbing to make sure I've rubbed it in, but it really spreads and rubs in like a dream. I don't see any patchiness. Super easy. This is how much is left. I'm gonna put some down my neck again. Might as well just rub it between the two hands on the backs. It does have that SPF protection. I feel like I'm not as dewy as I was with the sunscreen on, but a lot of the dew that's coming through or the shininess is probably from the sunscreen. So keep that in mind. You can see on my hand the actual finish. It's really skin-like with a little bit of sheen. And you can see even with more on, even though I put on two coats, and I think this is about as much as I could possibly do, my skin still looks like skin. Yesterday I went to Nordstrom to the makeup counter. The woman there told me I had beautiful skin. It was someone like it, with perfume, like she wasn't trying to sell me makeup. And I said, oh, well, thank you. I have a lot of makeup on. And she said, well, I can tell you have on mascara and blush. And I was like, no, I have on a lot of foundation too, but thank you. Anyway, it really does look like skin. That's the biggest compliment I can give this. It wore nicely and it has the SPF. So, so far I'm a big fan. Let's go ahead and do my concealer. I have really been enjoying and continued using the Tower 28 concealer. I have the shade K-Town. I think it's kind of perfection. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm probably gonna need a deeper shade for summer, especially if this shade of foundation is gonna be my summer shade, which I'm, thinking it might be. I'm gonna put a little over here. I feel like my jowls always look really dark. This is creamy, but lightweight. It sets down itself. You don't need to powder it. I typically do just because I don't like any shine under my eyes because of the bags that I have going. I mean, look how effortless that is to blend out. This is the Angie Hot and Flashy A506 brush. I love it for concealer. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. I always forget and put it on both eyes so you can't really compare, but look how skin-like that looks. I mean, it doesn't look like I have concealer on, in my opinion. Let me know what y'all think. Maybe, hopefully the camera's focusing. I can't tell. Yes, I have wrinkles, but it's not settling. Not to say it won't, but it really just looks like skin. Looks like my skin. Feels, is very comfortable, lightweight, and yet has everything that I want and does everything that I want. I also didn't include this in the beginning because it's in my makeup bag and I appreciate it didn't come with a box, so I didn't show you the box for it. This is the Sephora Contour Stick and I got it in the shade Light to Medium, zero two. As I said, I have used it. I touched lightly. This is so creamy. I've been so impressed with the formula. And now this is the Westman Atelier Contour Stick and Biscuit. This is a mini. I just want to compare shades. The Westman Atelier has more red in it. But if I spread this out and look how easily this spreads out or shears out. I mean, that's great. The Sephora is a little teeny bit bronzier, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it so you see how beautiful. It looks like I put a lot on, but I barely touched it to my skin and this is what happened. It does have a twist bottom. Let's see how much is in there. And I have just been using my Real Techniques brush. This is the 200. Again, it's a domed, densely packed brush. Synthetic brushes are better with cream products, and if you use real hair brushes, those are better for powder, just so you know. And this is synthetic, and I'm just tapping, basically. And look how easily that just blended right in. Just creating that shadow, which is what you want from a contour. So I was out of town recently. I had a great aunt pass away. She was the family matriarch. My son went with me to the funeral and it was wonderful seeing all the family. It was a sad event, but so great to see everyone. It was unexpected, but she was 94, so not completely unexpected. It just sort of was sudden. Yeah, it's, it's all rubbed in. 
that little bit to create the shadow under my lip. So that's part of the time that I was away. I have the CL bronzer, which is SPF 30. It also has a twist component. Quite a lot there. I will put it over here. And then I'll re-swatch the Sephora contour. So there's the contour and there's the bronzer. You can see it's quite a bit warmer. This one's grayer, which is what you want between a bronzer and a contour. You want the contour to have gray because you're creating shadow. You want the bronzer to have some warmth to it, some a little bit of yellow tone to it because that's what the sun would do. Oh, I'm not, it's not going back down. So I just pushed it. Okay, I hope I didn't break that. So instead of using this today though, I'm going to go in with my new Sephora bronzer, which I have not used. This says zero, 00. It looks like I got sun-kissed haze. I guess maybe I got the lightest color. I do like the packaging. It's thin and sleek, no nonsense. It's plastic, but it feels substantial enough that it doesn't feel cheap. And I'm just gonna peel this off. Oh, I don't, that'll peel everything off. Maybe I can just, I do appreciate that it's very easy to get off. <sighs> if you've watched my videos, you know opening packages is quite a struggle for me. So let's see, cute. So it does have a mirror here. I'm gonna leave that film on though because the reflection with the camera isn't always so great. I feel like I'm getting a scent, like sunscreen. But it has the imprint on it, makes it very pretty, and it says matte. So this is a matte bronzer, which I do like. I prefer a matte bronzer. Well, I guess we'll bronze first, and then we'll go in and powder under my eyes because it's bothering me seeing how shiny I am, even though, like I said, the Tower 28 does set down but I was already so glowy before I started all this. I think that's what's going on here. So for bronzer, I'm gonna use my favorite bronzer brush, which is the Jones Road bronzer brush. I'm sorry, it's been a while. Like I feel like I'm really here, there, and everywhere. Okay, now let me get another swatch. It looks blurring too. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I don't even know if it'll show up because I'm already so sun-kissed from that foundation. So probably should have gotten a lighter shade of that, but here we are. I just tapped it in. It did bring down the shine. It is matte. I do appreciate that. So here's this side versus this side. Certainly a nice powder. Yeah, it smells like a nice beachy suntan lotion. Subtle, and I don't smell it on my face, but holding this in front of my face, I am smelling it. Interesting choice, and I actually kind of like it. But if you if you know me, you know I love a mild scent, one that you can smell but is not perfumey or overpowering, and also it has to not offend my allergies. Typically they bother my allergies if it is an essential oil scent. I'm gonna put this on the sides of my neck. I do see it. Maybe I should put some over here. Looks like it'll be a good color. It's kind of hard to tell because I'm orange. First, let's go in with the CL Face Powder. This is Filter and Protect SPF 30. I love the packaging. It is plastic, but I just think it's so nice. She, um, she made it, you know, nice and sleek, but also gave it a fun shape and a twist top. It does come with the softest sponge, and it's green, which is also cool. It has a net up here, but since it's brand new and was very full, it's sort of spilling out. Here is, like I said, I've used this. Here is the cute powder puff. I'm gonna tap it off in the top. Also, it does have this point up here, which is really nice to get under the eyes. So there's one side powdered, one side not. Big difference, right? But it still looks like skin. It doesn't look dried out. And I'm gonna come close and show you again.
I am blown away by this powder. I love that it has the SPF. It is tinted. Um, let's see. I got the shade 02. So there are shades in this. I don't feel like it added coverage though, but I do like that it didn't whiten under my eyes. I am not a person who can use brightening under the eyes that makes me look tired or sick. It takes down the shine. It looks skin-like. It blurs. I think it's just fantastic. And this is so fun and so soft. I'm just putting it everywhere where I don't want shine, which is pretty much the center of my face and also under my cheekbones. I'll just take whatever's left and I don't know, put it around my neck since, since it's sun protection. Wow. Love it. I have also used a brush with this. I've used the Say powder brush for under the eyes and it worked great with that too. So you don't have to use this powder puff, but I thought it was fun and it feels so nice on the skin. Okay, let's go in with some eyes. I'm gonna use the Merit Solo Shadow in the shade Studio. I have another one of these in Social which is more purpley. And so I was excited to try this one. You've probably seen the component. It says Merit with the shiny top, sort of a tortoisey. No, not really. It's actually like a smoke brown bottom. The top twists closed and it kind of has a click. So you know you've closed it all the way so it doesn't dry out. You get a lot of product. This is the shade that right here. So it's like a pinky beige. But when I put it on my eye, you'll see it doesn't have a whole lot of depth on my eyelid. It's pretty close to my skin tone and yet it does look like I have something on. You can use your fingers with these. You can use a brush. They blend out beautifully. They, I believe are waterproof. I've washed my face and it's still on. So Keep that in mind. If you want a long wearing product, this is that. And I'm just gonna do that with it today. Really easy one and done shadow. This is what I've been wearing. I took it with me out of town to the funeral because I wanted to have you know some makeup on and look decent, but I also didn't want to look all made up. So this was great. Before the funeral, I was sick. So that's why I didn't film then is because I was sick and I just couldn't get myself going. I was sleeping all day and I don't know if it was allergies or a cold, <clears throat> it was something. And I still am definitely having some of those congestion issues. <laughs> yeah, this will show you. So I'm going in with a micellar water and wiping off the swatches on my arm and there's the Merit eyeshadow. It's not coming off and I will get it off. And, and it's not typically a problem, but I'm just saying, if you want a budge-proof eyeshadow that is creamy and easy to apply, and you can sheer it out more or build it up, you can use your hands, you can use a brush, um, and it'll dry down and last, this is it. So I did get it off, but you saw that. It takes some work. I'm a little nervous at this point because I wanted to show you guys a product that I didn't try on camera, but I did tell you I got. It's the Gen C Brow product. I don't see what it's called, but I got the shade Medium Brown. I'm not used to the look, let's just say that. It is very pigmented, a ton comes out. I'm gonna try to take some off the brush and maybe that'll help. I don't know if I've tried it. I tried it one time and was so horrified by how I looked that I haven't used it since. Here's the brush, cute little brush. I know this is so many people's favorite I see on YouTube. Okay, here we go. I am barely touching. Okay, I think I did a good job of wiping it off. I think that made a huge difference. But check that out. If you want your brows filled in, this is a great product. I don't typically go that strong. If you press down at all, it deposits onto your skin and that's not what I wanted. So I'm definitely going bold brows today, but this is what it looks like. I usually go for something quite a bit more natural looking, so it surprised me. All right, so then before I was sick, I was planning on filming 
on a trip that we took and I took my filming stuff, but it was on that trip that I got sick. So I didn't end up filming. It was very hectic. We had to get a lot done and the weather was terrible and I was sick. We got a flat tire one day. No, it was I think on a Sunday. I mean, it was, it was a rough, rough trip. And then we came back and I was still sick. And then as I started to recover, my aunt passed away. So we went out of town for the funeral and it was so sudden. We found out on a Friday and I went on Saturday and didn't pack all my stuff to film. So anyway, here are the brows. I don't like how it got on the skin. I should have brought in a little spoolie, but I don't think I have one in here with me. This will hold my brows and fill them in, and the shade is fine. It's just a much richer, heavier brow than I'm used to, which is good news for you if that's what you're looking for. I think we can now move on to blush, and let's go in with the Nude Stick Matte All Over Face Blush Color. Wow, I did that without my readers. And every Nude Sticks product comes in this metal container with a mirror. So you can use these for paper clips or cotton balls or, you know, whatever. The idea is that you can and should use the container. Although with something like this, I feel like it just doesn't need a container. So while they're trying to be earth friendly, I feel like earth friendly would be just sending this product on its own. Okay, I have the shade Sunkissed Pink. It has a cute little heart. I love the shade. This is a typical, what we're seeing more and more of, stick product that rolls up. It's not rolling up. Great. Hmm. Well, that's a bummer. I broke the CL, which wouldn't go down, and now this one won't come up, so maybe I'll get in touch with Sephora. I'm gonna see if I can use my BK Beauty 107, again, the travel size. <clears throat> oh wait, it is working now, it is working now. You never know. All right, dabbing it on, you can see, doesn't really do anything, because it's a drier formula, you need the warmth of your skin or finger to warm it up. But if I use a brush, I can get it onto the brush just fine. I just wanted to break in and let you know that I used that same blush today with different foundation and things on underneath. And I tapped it on my cheeks and it went on just fine. It was much creamier. I think the difference is not just the products I have underneath, but the fact that I had just showered. And so it was in a warmer, more humid environment as opposed to just being left on the counter in my office where it was cooler and drier and so the product was harder. And then I can tap it on and it will go on very nicely. I love this shade, I absolutely love it. It's like a perfect flush shade for me. So I'm keeping it more back here towards the back of my cheeks and then using what's left on the apples. That's to try to lift my face more. I usually put a lot on the apples. It's my understanding that an older person or someone who wants their face lifted more should concentrate the color back here. But truly, when I go in the sun, this is where I get sun. I really like this formula. I found it to be really easy to work with. All these products have been. I've been so impressed and I have a lot of kind of stickiness on my face now between all the hydrating products and everything, the sunscreen, the mask before that, and then the serum foundation. And this just went on beautifully, no pilling. It didn't pick anything up. It's worn nicely. It does fade throughout the day, but let me go ahead and swatch it for you. Look how pretty that is. Just a bright, cool tone pink. I love it. And you can use it on your lips too. It isn't at all hydrating or moisturizing. It is a drier formula, as I mentioned. So using it on your lips, you'll definitely want something else there. Of course, you could use it on your eyes too. I don't use pink on my eyes. That is not a good look for me. I think I am gonna use a little eyeliner since I've got the bold brows. I've just got the Jones Road eyeliner here in brown. I really like the shade of it, and they don't sell this at Sephora, but I really like this. It's a deep neutral brown. I really like the shade. I don't 
know that it's the best eyeliner. You know, I haven't found any eyeliner to really work on me, meaning every eyeliner ends up under my lower waterline throughout the day. I don't understand it unless I really just keep it on the top and don't get it at all in the upper waterline or anything. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put it between my lashes here just to make my lashes look fuller and give a little definition. And then I'm just gonna smudge it the teeniest bit. That's it. And then I am still using the Thrive Cosmetics Mascara. This is called Brin Rich Black. It's their Liquid Lash Extensions. I talked about getting this. I may have even shown it to you. I'll go ahead and show you the wand. And I got this from Thrive Cosmetics, not from Sephora. It has a wand that I love. It's the rubberized kind that really grips each lash. And it's tapered, not too thick or big, easy to work with. And this is the OG of tubing mascaras. I'm not curling my lashes. And I got this because tubing mascaras wash off so easily. Did I just get that? I don't know. Wash off so easily, you don't need to do any scrubbing or tugging or anything, and they wear amazingly well. And so I wanted to try the OG because I fell in love with the Beauty Pie Mascara, the Beauty Pie Tubing Mascara. I did my lashes out more rather than up because I'm just trying a different look. <laughs> with this mascara, I find it kind of spidery and I don't like how my face looks when I do my mascara like I would with any other mascara. Using the Thrive Mascara, it just, I feel like it doesn't look good when I just do it, you know, like a doe-eyed look. I feel like it looks better when I really focus the mascara out to the side like this, fanned out to the side. All right, so there are both the lashes done. Like I said, this has more of a spidery look. I'm actually not loving this, and I do prefer the Beauty Pie Tubing Mascara over this one. I just haven't loved the way my lashes look, and I've ended up with smudging, and not so much smudging, but balls under my eyes, you know, some flakes by the end of the day, which I've never gotten with a tubing mascara, and you really shouldn't get with a tubing mascara. And the last thing is this really holds on to my lashes. So while its parts are flaking off and ending up under my eyes, when I go to wash it off, I actually have to take my lashes and gently pull the tubes off. It's not at all a tugging, it's more like gently putting my fingers around my lashes and just going like that. But I don't even wanna do that. It should just come off much easier in my opinion and the Beauty Pie mascara comes off Super easy with water. It didn't flake or smudge or anything on me at all. And yet the OG best one ever, I've not been loving. The longer I've had the tube open, I think the better it's wearing. Even though I did everything to take down the shine, you know I'm not gonna end this look without some sparkle or shine. And so I've got the Victoria Beckham highlighter in the shade Pearl. I did a Victoria Beckham beauty brand overview if you wanna know more about this, but I do love it. So I'm just gonna put a dab here. And then I'm not putting more on, I'm just taking what's left on my fingers and putting that up here under the brow bone. Actually, I'm gonna go in and put on a little bit of my Tower 28 Oat. It's their Tower 28 like lip milk or milky lip, something like that. Still a great, great lip gloss. I love the Tower 28 lip glosses. I haven't talked about them in a while. They're comfortable, hydrating, last a long time, have just the right amount of shine. I like the paddle. You know, it's not some funky, weird thing. It doesn't come out and plop on the ground. It has a lovely coconut scent. Last but not least, before I take my hair down, the LYS setting spray. One of you guys recommended this to me. Let me see what the box says. LYS stands for love yourself, in case you didn't know. It's not LIS, it's LYS. And let's see what it says. Okay, this mattifying setting spray instantly hydrates the complexion while locking in makeup for flawless all day wear, enriched with cucumber and green tea extracts. It's refreshing, blurs the look of enlarged pores, unwanted textures, fine lines. Skincare infused formula, great for all skin types. You don't need to shake it first. And look at the cute packaging with, these are actually holes. 
and I love that this is also triangular shaped. I've heard great things about their setting powder. I'm kind of powdered out for now. I have about six powders going, but I would love to try it. So the container said matte, but now this says natural. It has absolutely no scent. I like that you just, you don't have to shake it. Great mister. Yeah, no scent at all, which for me is the biggest win. And while well, I am the mister, I, I really, I really like it. It doesn't add shine. I don't know that it's matte. It hasn't dried down yet, but let me take my hair down and we can sum up what's going on here. I have got to go back to my old hairdresser. She's really far away, but seems to be the only one who knows how to cut the shape of my hair so I don't end up like a triangle. All right, guys, let's talk about what we have here today. I'm super impressed with the Sephora mask I used. I'm gonna look into seeing if I can compost it. That's the only negative to me about it is if I can't compost it, because it's just more waste. And there are compostable masks and lots of them out there. But the Sephora brand is, well actually everything from Sephora I've been really pleased with. The bronzer, the mask, and the contour stick. All of them. This formula is fabulous. How beautiful and creamy. And you just touch it to your skin and it goes on, it glides, and is super easy to shear out. You're not gonna look like a clown. Yeah, the mask was super hydrating and the bronzer was blurring and nice. I can see really, really enjoying this. So the Sephora collection has blown me away. I actually tried to get some of their eyeshadow, but they didn't have any of the shades that I wanted in stock by the time I shopped. Then I have a few things from CL. The foundation, I should have gotten a lighter shade. This may work for me as we head into summer. So I think it kind of works okay with how I took it down my neck and everything. But the point is it's got SPF 50, all mineral, non-nano, zinc oxide, and it is a skin tint and a serum foundation. My skin absolutely looks like skin, but it did add a little bit of coverage. It's totally comfortable on the skin. I really like it. So I'm excited to add this to my routine. I also love her powder, their powder, the CL powder SPF 30 on this one. The blurring and the mattifying and still skin-like finish is perfection. I love the tint I got. I absolutely love this. I already knew I loved the Mara eyeshadow. This is a great everyday shade for me. As I said, this is the shade Studio. Even though it looked like a purplish or pinkish nude on my arm, well, maybe that is what it is. <laughs> but it looked like it had a lot more pigment than it does when I have it actually on my eyes. I've really been enjoying the Nude Sticks blush, this all over face blush color in the shade Sun Kissed Pink. A lot of it has to do with the shade. I love the shade. The formula is nice. It's a stiffer formula, which means it lasts longer, which is also nice. This is all I've been reaching for. If that tells you how I feel about it, I don't know how much that has to do with the formula versus the shade. It's a matte dryer formula that dries down, that lasts a long time, and the pigment's great, and I'm loving the shade. So yeah, I, I guess I do like it. And then the LYS setting spray. I'm reading what it says. Blur Mattify Set. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It didn't add any sheen to my face. I wouldn't say it mattified. I don't know that it blurred the pores or did any of that, but so far I've really enjoyed it. Love that it's totally no scent, not just fragrance free. There's no scent at all. And the spritzer is fantastic. It's a nice experience. Hopefully it helps the makeup last longer. I'll try to pay attention to that. I think that's everything. If I forgot something, my apologies. Let me know what you think of everything I got. Let me know what you got, what you'd wanna see more of, either an individual review or something else I should try. Like I said, I really wanted to try these Sephora eyeshadows. They're so inexpensive, the Sephora collection, that I'll probably just get an eyeshadow anyway. So that's probably in my future. I still have the rest of my empties to get through that I said to be continued and I don't know what else I have coming up. I really got to get organized here. So I'd love to hear from you what you want to see. I hope you enjoyed this video, that it gave you some good information. And as always, I hope you find some time to pamper yourself today. Bye.